Hi guys, today I wanna to talk about inspiration. For a really long time, I believed that I wasn't very creative. I had a lot of family and friends that are great artists and graphic designers and fashionistas. And so for me, I always just felt like okay at it, but never like exceptionally great. And so I struggled with believing that I had any bone or any ounce of my body that was creative. And I remember one time wrapping a gift and it sounds so small, but it really stuck with me. And I remember one time wrapping a gift and I, I wrapped it fast because I was kind of frustrated and tired and over it. And I remember a cousin of mine just saying like, girl, that sucks. And even though it was something that I didn't really put dedication or effort into, and even though it wasn't something that I cared to do, it reinforced the idea that I just wasn't creative. And so I struggled with that. And it wasn't until years and years down the road that I started to think about who I was as a person and really started to uncover deep down below the surface, below the outer appearance, who was Dr. Nicolia under the surface. And I found out that I actually am extremely creative. I just wasn't in a position to create an environment that allowed the inspiration to come. So for those of you that aren't familiar with like what inspiration is or what inspiration looks like, that's what I wanna talk about today. So inspiration is the process of being mentally stimulated to do something especially creative. So maybe you need the inspiration to write a book or inspiration to start a new course for your business or inspiration to design something or decorate your house or anything like that. And it's so funny that years ago, I went from one position of like feeling like I wasn't creative, nothing could inspire me, to now I'm in a position of where my mind goes a million miles a minute. Um, just yesterday, I'm in a mastermind group of my biz, with my biz besties, and I wrote in there that I needed a waterproof notepad. And they're like, why do you need a waterproof notepad? And I told them, it's like, every time I get in the shower, these amazing ideas come to me, but I just can't like write them down anywhere. I just don't have any anywhere to put them. And so it just showed me the growth that I've had. And so today I want to share how I was able to find my motivation and my inspiration so that I could bring out that creative side and continue to go after the big things that I wanted to accomplish. So the first thing that I did is I identified my why. So my why is my children. Like I cannot tell you how much motivation my children give me. When I had children, especially my first daughter, I was really young. And so a lot of people thought that that would kind of impact my success or get in the way of the things that I wanted to accomplish. But I tell people all the time that all it did was propel me into the success that I really desired. It gave me a lot of motivation to continue to press forward because I wanted success so bad for her. I wanted to create a stable environment. And more importantly, I want to be an example for my children. And so a lot of times what I do is I keep that why right in front of me. So what I do in my area, my office area, like you see my books behind me, those are motivation as well, but I keep a picture of my children and that reminds me constantly why I'm pressing, why I'm pushing harder, why I'm juggling so many things, why I'm so dedicated to helping and supporting people, why I want to be a positive example for them. And that really motivates me um, to, to push beyond that. You know, I got to a place in my life where I was so tired of living a life that I wasn't called to do. I got so tired of pretending to be something I wasn't anymore. And I, I realized that through my reflective practice. And so I wanted to become authentically Dr. Nicolia. And I wanted to set that example for them so that they don't grow old as young women thinking that they have to pretend to be something to make other people comfortable or to fit in a box. You can be what you want to be. And that's what I feel like my life should be able to exemplify for them. Like I am my brand and I am authentically who I am. And I want them to, to be able to see that. The second way that I find inspiration is I reflect regularly. I had a quote that was once said to me and it says, it is your obligation to do what God calls you to do. And that one quote really put me in deep thought and I started to think, you know, what is it that I'm called to do? What is it that um, inspires me? What motivates me? What do I feel like is supposed to be what I'm on earth here, what I'm on earth for? And that reflective practice allowed me to really start to think about how I can improve my motivation and my inspiration. And when I thought about it and I realized that my struggles 
led to my success, that is my job, my obligation to be able to support other people that also have those same struggles. What would I look like to have been blessed enough to find a solution to my hurt or to find a solution to be able to write a book, but then I'm just keeping it a secret and I don't want anybody else to know. I don't want anyone else to be blessed by my testimony. Then I'm just keeping it. That's That does no good to anybody. That serves no purpose. And so I started to reflect. And one of the things that I often ask my clients to do is I ask them to take some time to reflect. And the big question that I ask them is what is the, I don't know, two or three things that you have been afraid to admit that you truly want in your life? And I ask them to answer it like this. Because typically if you wait 30 minutes, you'll talk yourself out of it like, oh, that doesn't sound right that I should ask for that. You know, like you may say something like, I'm afraid to admit that I want to be able to have a financial position to where I can live comfortably. But if you wait 30 minutes to answer that question and you start to question it like, well, there are people starving and I shouldn't be, you know, ungrateful. It's not about being ungrateful. It's about what you deserve. And what is it that you're afraid to admit that you truly want in your life? When you're able to identify the top three to five things that you truly want in your life, then you can start to be inspired by those things. What steps can I take that will allow me to get there? And this can only come if you take time to reflect. If you fill your days with other things and other people's goals and you know the various hats that you wear and you don't reflect on what it is that you desire outside of that or you don't reflect on who you truly are outside of that fake identity that society has us put on you're going to miss a lot and so a lot of my inspiration comes from reflecting in flat in fact when i reflect i take time to journal different things that come to my mind maybe i'm reflecting on a conversation that i had with a client earlier maybe i was on um, someone's instagram page and i got inspired by a quote maybe it was something that my pastor shared on a Sunday or a Saturday. Um, maybe it was something I learned in small group. Maybe nine times out of 10 is things that I learned from my own children or, or things that they say, but I take time to reflect and that inspires me to continue to move forward. Um, and then the third step that I take to improve my inspiration is my environment. I allow my environment to reflect what I want to feel. So I don't want to walk in my environment and feel cluttered and chaotic. You know, there's studies that say your environment is reflective of your brain. So if there's a lot of clutter or a lot of chaos or a lot of dirt or a lot of distraction, that's what your brain is going to reflect. And so I keep my environment very clean, very orderly, very organized and very peaceful. You know, I have a diffuser to bring, you know, healthy smells. I keep the temperature at a great you know, pace. I have a couch behind me so that I'm able to, to sit back and relax. I have motivational books that remind me what I'm pushing for as an author and as an influencer for my generation. Um, I have pillows. I have just comp candles. I have lighting. I have a lot of comfortable things in my environment that inspire me to keep pressing. I also have my vision board, which reminds me what my big goals are. What are, you know, the things that I'm wanting to accomplish? What are the things that I'm, I'm chasing after? What is my purpose? What is my why? And so I keep that around me because I believe that your environment is reflective of your mindset. And so if you want a calm and peaceful and motivated and creative and inspired mind, create an environment that also reflects that. Finally, there's one last thing, um, way that I gain inspiration and that's just outside in nature. Um, I'm, I believe that nature is very calming and very peaceful. And so sometimes when I've been in my office for a very long time and I don't feel inspired, I don't feel like ideas are coming, I'll just go on a walk. I'll just take, you know, take off walk outside and I walk for 20 minutes. One, it gets those endorphins going so I'm naturally in a, in a feel better, uplifted mood. But two, it allows me to reflect on the environment. What sort of things am I seeing? I know for me, when I was writing a book and I was writing to single moms, I'd walk to the park a lot and I would see just different emotions that they were feeling or stresses that they were carrying or maybe they were in a great mood because they're throwing their kid up. And I don't know for sure if half of these people were single parents, but it inspired me to keep writing so that I was empowering the single women that I was writing to. And so just taking a walk and being out in nature allowed me to be in tune with myself and my thoughts and there was no distraction. So I don't always listen to music or podcasts or um anything like that that's going to distract me from nature, but I take time to really focus on what's going on around me so that I can take in some of that information. And so the best thing that I can tell you, if you're looking for ways to find inspiration, to bring out that creative side, is to slow down 
and reflect. Those are like the two biggest things that I can tell you because a lot of times in our life we're such we're so fast paced and it's go 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 and so there's really no time for expansion. There's really no time for growth. There's really no time for deep um, thought. There's really no time for that. But if you give yourself that space to not only think but to be able to reflect and journal and process, then you'd be surprised what inspiration and creativity can come from that. So. Remember, we are sent here for a purpose, right? And what good does that purpose do if you're hiding it, if you're living under a shell, or if you're living behind a, a facade? It's time for you to step into that purpose. So give your spell, space, give yourself space to create that, that opportunity. Until next time, I'll chat with you guys later. Bye.